Hello, Saltron Nation. Joe Simon's like diamonds back again. This is going to be a fun one. Got my friend Captain Mike Goodwine, aka Black Neck Adventures, fresh off of this Bassmaster Redfish Cup tournament, sitting in a Walmart parking lot because that's the only place you can get reception in your little town there in Georgia. What's up, dude? What's going on? And I, I apologize for being in a Walmart parking lot, but uh, we. Where I'm hunting at, we have no service. So it's one of those places you got to stand on a rock and hold a phone in one hand and balance yourself to get a signal. And I didn't want to mess this podcast up. So I hopped in the truck, ran to town, and here we go. <laughs> I've had to do that yeah. as well. well uh, we got some uh, family properly up there in, in Georgia in between Macon and Savannah. And it's the same deal. No service. You can't get internet there. Nothing. And you got to go yeah. to the you got to go to the Walmart there. It's the only place that you can do anything. <laughs> yep, yep. And then sometimes it could be a good thing because I basically live on my phone with my business, and so to disconnect sometimes just to defrag my brain is actually <laughs> awesome. And if, if I wasn't in the woods, I wouldn't put the phone down. So sometimes we have they have to go somewhere to force us to disconnect for a little bit that's a lesson in and of itself my friend all right so let's talk <laughs> about this bassmaster redfish cup well there's probably a lot of people don't even know about it but it was one of the most viewed things last year this is the second year they've done it bassmaster obviously has been around what since the 60s and has been a mm -hmm. massive massive movement for just getting more people out there fishing they have said the bassmaster classic they came up with this redfish cup so talk about talk about that for the people who don't even know what it is and and how to win it and all that great okay. stuff. What were the rules? Okay, so last year they it was the first annual uh, Bassmaster Redfish Cup, and what they do is you have to five teams qualify. Five teams they qualify, and then they have an invite list where they invite. Uh, Bass pros, guys that's fishing, fishing the elite, uh, guys that have, has won the Bassmaster Classic, uh, some heavy names in bass fishing. And they take those guys and they pair them with a redfish guy. So uh, I got invited and uh, they paired me with Brandon Polinick. So, and then it was last year, the purse was 50000 and the response from it was so huge from last year. They bought it back again this year, and the purse was 100000 And just a quick note, everybody have heard of the Bassmaster Classic. Well, the Redfish Cup last year actually got more views than the Bassmaster Classic on TV. Wow. It was pretty impressive. That's huge. So, and, it's, and I think the reason is because you got – Two worlds colliding, salt water and fresh water. You got a uh, fresh water guy and a salt water guy on a lake we've never been to before trying to catch redfish. And it's quite entertaining. I don't know if y'all saw it. Uh, I like to have fun. Brandon didn't know what he was getting into, <laughs> but he found out who Mike Goodwine is. <laughs> yes, yeah. sir. And so similar to bass fishing, the rules are you have to use lures. You can't go out there and you can't lug around your big old cast net. You're using lures, slot redfish mm -hmm. only, and it's the best two for the day, for yeah. three days. Yep. Best best two two each day. And the slot limit there was 20 to 28. And my goal, I mean, I wanted, my goal was to win it. I wanted to win it. Cause I'm competitive. I like to win, but my main goal <clears throat> that I made for myself, I said, I gotta, I gotta make the stage. I gotta weigh in two fish each day. That was my goal. And we accomplished that. And, but during practice, I was thinking, Oh man, this probably ain't gonna happen because we had a cold front come through and it was nasty, man. So, with the weather being bad, 
me not, I, I have never been there before. My partner had never been there before. We both was two fish out of water, but we figured it out. After, by the time the tournament came, we had a game plan and we we bought two fish to the scales each, each day. Yeah, and you guys did quite well. And in a, in a, can you only imagine, right, going to a brand new place with real money on the line, a hundred thousand? And did you're in your foul weather gear? It was it was blowing like almost like a tropical storm. It was nuts. Um, yeah. So that first, yeah. the I watched the I had it on a second screen while I was trying to work and and uh, and not <laughs> laugh too hard. You get up there on stage that first day and. You know, the the announcer, uh, bass tournaments, not really know what to expect. You start talking about dropping poop off in your pants or something. <laughs> he's dying laughing. He's not really sure. He's like, is this, my, is this guy being serious? <laughs> Dude, no. I was I was rolling, man. I was like, this is hilarious. Yeah, and, and so, first of all, he, put, he pronounced my name wrong, and I corrected him on yep, that. Yep. And the way I corrected him, he was like, okay, okay. <laughs> And he didn't know what he was going to get into. So, uh, but I just told him we got beat to death. We we ran 38 miles Whoa. one way. Yeah, 38 miles uh, to get to where we was fishing at. And uh, ice was more around 30. And um, it was three to four footers, man. And, and you know, every morning – if everybody that fish, I don't care who you are, if you hunt a fish that morning, you all excited, you get pumped up about fishing, you get nervous. And I didn't have time to go get the nervous out the way. So all day long, I was, man, my stomach was killing me because I was on TV and uh, trying to catch fish. And, but, uh, it was a it was a close one. No, I didn't poop my pants, but it was close. <laughs> Real close. It was pra- prairie dogging over there. Hell yeah, because of turtle head. But and he and he that, that was the thing. He when he asked me how did it go, that's the first thing that came to my mind. I was like, man, I almost crapped my pants, but it was it was bad. <laughs> but uh, it's pretty cool. It was fun. All right, so let's talk about tips. So what were you, like, what was the game plan? Why did you guys decide? Obviously, I assume you're looking at satellite maps and stuff. Why did you decide to go that far away? Uh, Did some other guys stay closer? Uh, Talk about the types of spots that you fish. I noticed no one was really targeting, like, docks and things, you know, like that. It was, uh, talk talk, talk about that more, like, the, the types of spots that you fished and why. Okay, so we went to where we went because of the wind, and it was a, uh, and it was, I found out that just about everybody in the tournament was either going to go north or south. So I'm, I've always been like this. If the crowd goes to the left, I'm going to the right. I just, I just don't like fishing around people, and uh, but when I say that. I just like to do my own thing and get away from people. And it, uh, with that being said, kind of like um, if I go over to Wee now in Tampa and there's a, a hundred boats over there, they could be catching 200 eggs a cast. I'm going to go the opposite way just because the, the crowds are trying to do something different. Yep. But back to – up there, up in Texas, um, we found found the spot that was was a cove, and and I did have somebody who fished it last year. Had told me he pre fished up there, and uh, it'll be out of the wind. He said it's a long drive, but it'll be out of the wind, and he didn't drop a pin or certain area. He just told me to bait, and so we made that run to get up there to get out of the wind. Uh, we got beat up getting there, but um, that was the uh, that was the plan. And and then when I got to the bay to figure out where the fish at, I used Google Earth and or Google Maps. I used both of them. And um, if 
you zoom in, you can see the potholes, the grass and potholes. And I just, that's what I look for. And then when I'm fishing somewhere new, I call it horseshoes or indentions or some people will call it like a half moon. So each shoreline, I don't care where you go, anywhere you fish, you have a hard shoreline. And then you have a where the shoreline kind of go in and come back out. Mm -hmm. And make like a little pocket or cove or horseshoe. We got so many different names for it. But normally if you find a little cove, if you if you find a hard shoreline and then it it goes in and come back out, nine times out of ten is gonna be fish holding in that area, especially if it's got potholes in it. So I don't know why it's like that, but every time I find one of those little pockets, you catch fish. And that's what we did. We just, we just, uh, we worked that area and we kind of had fished every inch in that area. So the last day we switched up and went to another area and the same thing, we started drifting. We got on this hard shoreline, and every time the shoreline went in and came back out, we caught fish. Hmm. And we drifted, man, we drifted probably like two miles. Wow. And just catching fish on every time the shoreline dips in and out. With, with potholes, uh, grassy potholes in it. So, you know, from our oh. perspective, the viewer perspective, you know, that they weren't showing you live the whole time, right? They, you, they would usually kind of zoom in to you, like why you guys are bringing in a, a, a nicer fish. Like, what was it like? Were you guys, do you guys catch five fish, 10, a hundred? And I know you were catching trout. And I think one day you had a big flounder, maybe it was in pre-trip, but uh, what, what was it like yeah. throughout the day? Uh, you know, we, we all got to see the, the, the two that you keep. Uh, mm -hmm. What was the fishing like overall? Yeah. So, the first day, we, we caught a bunch of shorts, a bunch of small ones, and he he got one like seven pounds, six and seven pounds, Brandon did, and then he he boated one that was four pounds, and then I finally boated one that was a little over four, so we caught that fish, and then in between those bites. It was just a bunch of rat reds out there, man. They got a bunch of rat reds. And I was throwing the, um, a spoon. And the second day, that's when we had the, the front come through. And I just stuck with the spoon, and I, I caught a bunch of rats. Still was catching small fish. And he threw a chowder bait or something at the end of the day and caught a nice spoon. And... Uh, <clears throat> We ended up with two fish, but we, the second day we probably caught for a total, that day we probably caught 10 fish. Okay. First day we probably caught 25. And then were, the were you catching day, a bunch of trout in there in, the, in, in between two? Yes, we was catching trout, uh, flounder, and, and reds. And, um, the trout, the trout was, keyed in on the spoon and then I um uh let me see I'm trying to think I'm trying to think what I got that flown on I think it was a spoon too hmm. but um no I got the trout on the uh I think it was the small the small slam shady the uh, the, is it a three inch? Uh, yeah, the, th the three and a half, the two point oh one. Yep. Three. Yeah, yeah. On that one, the the black and gold one. What is that one called? The gold digger. Gold digger. Yeah. And I, I caught, I threw the gold digger some in the, in the um on the second day. I did throw the gold digger, and the trout was all over. I mean, at one point, it was every cast. The trout was <laughs> trout was on it. And but it was real tough that day, and then the third day, man, we lost count catching fish. Uh, it was pretty awesome. I switched to the bomber, the five inch bomber, the slam, the slam shady was, color, 
the Slam Shady Cola, and it was game on, brother. So if, uh, if only you'd use that the entire three days, you know who would have. I know, I know, man. That's that was my biggest regret of the whole tournament. I was like, if I would have just put this thing on 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 day one, the results would have been a whole lot different. But I learned. So next year. When I'm there, that's all I'm gonna throw the whole time. So I'm gonna I'm gonna die by it. But uh, and those fish was aggressively like hitting that bait, man. Almost it it reminded me of in Tampa when I'm around a schooling fish, and a lot of people probably don't know this how you could tell if it's more than one fish in the area. This is kind of how I figured out. If you catch a redfish and he, I mean, he, you get it in and he's pretty much swallowed it. Like, uh, and I'm saying like from the first hit and you get it in and he swallowed it. Nine times out of 10 is other fish there in that area and he's competing. So he hurry up and hit it, try to swallow it and to go after another bait or it's a lot of bait in that area. Um, and I've, I've told my buddies, I was like, man, if you got one and he's pretty much tried to swallow it, he's competing with other redfish. And um, so when I was throwing that bomber, man, they was trying to swallow it, bro. And we was catching a lot of reds. So yeah. it, it was uh, just something for you people that's listening. If you fishing some bushes or anything in Tampa, and you catch a red, and he's pretty much, if he hit it harder and he swallowed it real quick, I ain't saying if he grab it and you don't know if he on there and he swim off and then swallow it. But from that first hit, and you get him in, and he's pretty much tried to swallow it, he's competing with other heads. That's good. Um, in that bomber, you know, Luke and Wyatt were just filming in Texas, a little bit south of Corpus Christi, close to where you guys were. And mm-hmm. the he was with a guy the the one day, and they were all using you know live bait under little popping corks and stuff. And mm-hmm. the bomber caught the biggest redfish the entire trip. And this guy's like, man, what the heck is that thing? A uh, little Doctor yeah. Juice and uh, Slam Shady mm-hmm. Bomber. So it, it works. T- and, and I heard I heard you had a funny name for Doctor Juice. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> I call it Pimp Juice now. I know it's Dr. Juice, but I call it Pimp Juice, too. <laughs> if y'all, if you go by, just look at the bottle. He reminded me of, he had the Pimp hat on. And, uh, <laughs> man, that stuff worked so good, man. And 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 I'm old school. I try, I'm old school, I mean, I, I try to, if I'm throwing a lure <laughs> and a fish eat it, I try to stick with that same bait. Some people take it off and put a new one on. Not me. I'm the guy that's that's got a two hundred of them in my boat, yep. and I'm still trying to piece this one bait together. I, I agree. So my my yep. theory is, I already know if it's gonna eat it. The smell on it is right. Everything yep. is right. It, it produced, so I'm gonna keep using it and uh. Uh, that's one thing I loved about that bomber too, man. I probably caught twelve to thirteen fish on one before I had to change it. Wow! And and uh, so you a lot of those baits out there, one or two fish. I know some of them one fish and it's done. You got to put another one on. So uh, I'm. It was pretty awesome, man. That's, what what depth were you guys fishing? What 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 type of like structure was it? It was um so what we was because of the wind, we was drifting. So we was drifting from the shoreline. Now when I say the shoreline, I run my trolling motor to it hits the bottom, and then I I let the wind drift me back off the shoreline and down the shoreline. Okay, so. We was fishing from 10 inches to three foot. Uh, I'll drift out until I get into three foot deeper water, then go back up on the edge and 
the the bigger fish came from the deeper water, which took me three days to figure that out too. But all the bigger fish, I got to looking like I was like, man, every big fish we caught was in deep water, and and all the small ones was up along the shoreline. Were you guys allowed? What were you allowed to do once you finish? Like in turn, you you mentioned you you couldn't call people and ask for advice. Could you could you watch the actual like uh, live recording? Could you? Nope, we couldn't. We couldn't. Oh. We couldn't watch what happened for that day. Uh, and we couldn't communicate with nobody outside of the tournament. Uh. But we could talk to the guys inside and. Of course, the guys in the tournament, they're only going to share so much because they're trying yep. to win. Yep. So uh, it was the whole time that was like kind of like wrecking my brain too. Being at the way in and we went in 12 and the other guy come in with 16 pounds, you think, man, what, what was he doing? You know? <laughs> but, uh, and, and, the guy who won it, Eddie, that man is Eddie, Eddie Adams. He's like the Jordan of Redfish tournaments. This man been doing it for 40 some years. And hands down, ain't nobody won more Redfish tournaments than this guy. And he, he, he and, isn't he a local? Is he the one that lives nearby there or no? Yeah, he lives in, um, I want to say, Homa or, or Delacron, Louisiana. Okay, okay, so, got it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he had, but he had never won a championship or any kind of redfish tournament away from his home water. And uh, that was his first one, so big up to him. That's cool. But, uh, yep. But then the reason he's won so many of them, just about all of the big, Redfish tournaments, the championships is always out of Louisiana. So, yep. Yeah, what's the reason I asked was funny is that first day, you there they had um on at least on the TV they were showing four of you guys at a time, right? Like little uh-huh. blocks, and you were I think you were in fourth or fifth place, and the guy the guys who won it last year they were in first place at the time. The guys who won it were in second. And the commentators, Captain Rick Murphy was one of them. There's three of them. They pointed uh-huh. it out. They said, hey, look, they, they mentioned you. They're like, hey, the good wine. And this guy's like, look, he's like, if you can actually see the bottom, they're in a foot or two foot. He's like, they're catching nice. They're catching four pounders. And that's that yeah. was true. That's about right. And he's like, these other guys, they're they're in like that five to six. There was a little bit deeper. And so that it was no. funny. They were literally like saying, here's the game plan. Because they could, they could watch it. They had the advantage of seeing everybody. Yeah. Uh, he's like that's it. Yeah. He's like they're in just just slightly deeper to catch those eight nine nine pounders, like the real big ones. Uh, so it was interesting. Yep. Yeah, and I we figured that out the last day, and while we was doing our drifts, those potholes we was throwing in the deeper potholes, catching bigger fish. And then when the tournament was all over and done, <laughs> that's the first thing my girlfriend told me. She's like, "You should have been fishing deeper water." I'm like, how do you know? <laughs> <laughs> Telling me where I should have been fishing. <laughs> well, that's where the winners in second place and third place is fishing in deep water. I'm like, oh, yes, yeah, you watched it. But yeah, that's funny, man. It is what it is. But so you, you've you obviously grown up fishing Tampa for redfish and are known as like one of the best guides there for consistently catching redfish. What are the big differences and also what are the similarities? Obviously you can use the same lures that, you know, we, we fish right near you mm. many times using slam shading and it crushes it in Tampa. So we know the lures work. What, what were some other similarities and other things that maybe threw you off on Texas reds versus the, the Tampa reds? Um, I mean, they, they pretty much everything pretty much was the same itself. Tampa got the shorelines got more area where the reds can get like under stuff like in the bushes and like our ties get high like like we have basically you can fish high tide or you can fish low tide in Tampa mm-hmm. 
to me out there, everything was low tide. Even on high tide, it was low. Like you couldn't pitch bushes. Wasn't no bushes to pitch mm. or so. That was the only thing that was different, I think, compared to Tampa. Uh, and it was just it's real shallow out there, like, and everything too. Like fires, they bays was bigger, and like I thought I knew, I thought I had, I've seen a big oyster bar. I didn't see a big oyster bar until I got to Texas. They have oyster flat, <laughs> like that water was dropped out, and it was like far as you could see, just shells and oyster. So it that's about the only thing I've seen different. Uh, they had. Bait, the pilchers out there, was bait diving, first diving on bait, mullet. It just it reminded me of home as far as like paws of bait swimming around and everything else. But um if you're a high water guy like I am, I like to catch reds on high water. It's tough. It's yeah. tough. <laughs> yeah. What, what was it like fishing with uh with Brandon with having a professional bass fisherman? Yeah, he was cool. We we um, I knew we was gonna get along good because we both like the same kind of hip hop music, you know. <laughs> so I went to his Instagram and I wasn't even concerned about the fish he caught or anything else. I seen one of his videos and he had some good music playing. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, that's my guy right here. <laughs> <laughs> But he, he uh those bass guys they they the bass guys uh what's I what I'm trying to say this the right way. The bass guys they analyze and observe like everything. That's the way bass guys' minds are working. And it was pretty cool to watch him break things down just the way he was his mind was constantly thinking on like what the fish doing what the bait doing and uh my mind used to be like that now i'm just thinking you know y'all need to eat i'm doing what y'all I, i'm doing what i need to be doing now the fish just need to eat Dude, you were you were you know. just you were just thinking, please don't crap my pants on national television. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that too. Yeah, and I was thinking uh, I don't. My biggest fear, I lost sleep over it. Once I once I found out that more people had watched this event than the Bassmaster Classic, I had nightmares, man, when thinking that I got skunked. And and everybody seen you come to the, the scales three days with no fish. <laughs> oh man, that's where a lot of this gray hair came from. Just <laughs> worried about not <laughs> not bringing fish to the scale, but we we pulled it off. Oh, you guys, you guys did awesome. Did um did did the bass guys bring you know twelve rods like you see in a lot of their tournaments? They have them all lined up on their the floor was he switching out <laughs> stuff all the time yeah he did he he done that part he threw his bait caster he had a bunch of rods and i was just gonna bring two rods because that's all it takes for me yeah. give me two rods and the other rod is there just in case the first one break or fall in the water <laughs> or whatever uh and i'm real one-dimensional I've always been like that. Once I find, once you find out what works, I kind of stick with it. And I've always been like that. And I mean, even the guy that won the tournament, they said he he do his same routine, and he's been doing it for forty some years, and it's it's been producing. It works. And I ain't never been the the type to be switching and switching like even on my charters i have a client throw a piece of white bait and catch three fish on each cast and then on the fourth cast i look back there and they putting the shrimp on 
I'm like, what are you doing? I'm just gonna try this. We just caught you just caught three fish <laughs> on white bait. Why would you want to change out? <laughs> you know, but and that drives me crazy. Even when I'm yeah. fishing with anybody. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'm, yep. I, I'm interested on the casting because you guys have wind. I assume you were trying to position your boat where you're not casting into it. But how? What was it like? Were you? Could you outcast him because you were using spinning tackle? And I noticed a lot of the redfish guys like you were using spinning mm. gear and the guys, you know, the bass guys were using what they use. Uh, what was, was that like, are those guys just so good? I've done it so long that they're whipping it out there as far as uh, the, the spinning tackle. Yeah. Yeah. He was slinging that, that spinning of bait far as I was throwing the spinning tackle, but I was throwing fall because <laughs> I was, he don't know, but I was competing against him <laughs> all three days on trying to outcast him. <laughs> He didn't know it, but that's what I was doing. I was getting a good five yards, sometimes ten yards farther than him. But he was probably the, one of the most accurate casting like fishermen I've ever been around. He could I'm talking about well, put it like this, I was I was eating the Snickers bar and the wrapper fell in the water and I went to go get it with the trolling mode, he was like, no, I got it. He took that, his bait castle and pitched that bait up there, grabbed that Snickers bar paper, bought it right in the boat. First cast. It blew yeah. my mind. Then my hat came off. He did the same thing with the hat. Just perfect. That that just, the, the candy bar wrapper, I'm like, he did that. He did it. Bought it right in the boat. So I was like, I forgot this guy's a pro. Like he's one of the best out there. Dude, that's a hero. So, yep. We we fished with Mike Iconelli, uh, gosh, it was two years ago now. And same thing. Like we're like, all right, we didn't tell him that we're competing, but like we're he's using his, you know, little bait casters and we're whipping it out further on the flats. But once we hit the docks, dude, I've never seen anything so smooth in my entire life. How with the bait yeah. caster, how he was skipping underneath docks in mm-hmm. in St. Pete area, and I mean, it, I I couldn't have done it in a million years that smooth. And I was like, "Holy, yeah. they, they, they've practiced that just so many times." It was yeah, so, they it got was so it, smooth. man. Yep, the accuracy and and the bait because a lot of they fishing is uh, especially during spawning season, they got to present that bait quiet as you can get it you don't want a big splash and they have to practice it man just like almost like a diver uh in the olympics trying not to make a huge splash that's they practice that with baits and they they are good at it yeah. love it man well so what were uh any other learning lessons things you'll change up for next year you got to keep them quiet uh make sure you win it win it in 2023 yeah i'm I'm ready, man. I'm like I said, the only thing I would change up is uh the throwing a bomber, the slam shady. That's, uh, that, next my... year, that's your thing. You you only take a hundred pack of bombers and a big old <laughs> pub of Dr. Juice and say, I'm just gonna stick with it and be consistent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm actually gonna get me a uh um Thing. I'm a, a old man problems. Oh, I'm gonna have me a spray bottle, a little tiny spray. I'm gonna put some of that Dr. Juice in a little tiny spray bottle. Yep. And just psh, psh, psh. we we got it. We got so, it. we got the bigger one that uh, it's a bigger size with a spray bottle. Okay. We'll yeah. So I just got the small one. I got the small one, but uh, and that's that's it. I'm gonna fish deeper water and and try not to make that. I'm going to try to find some fish a little closer next time. Like the third day we didn't, we didn't run seemed like all the way back to Tampa. Uh, it, it took us an hour to get there. Oh yeah. If, if you back. have so three we, foot, two foot, three foot swells. Yeah. That's brutal. Yeah. Yeah. We was even with, even without the, the swells. I mean, it was pretty rough the first day. Not as bad as it's an easy 45 minute run. So I got to talking to the guy who got second, and and they had they, they had two 
keep us in the boat to to fish and allow for weed and started fishing. So it it took us a, a little over an hour just to get to where we was going, but that's the that's part of gambling and fishing them tournaments. You you got to make them some calls sometimes. Yep. Well, that's cool, man. Yeah. Well, where can everyone go uh, follow you? What's the best place? Instagram? Uh, Yes. Instagram. You can follow me at Black Neck Adventures. And Facebook. It's under my name. I can't use Black Neck Adventures. Uh, I had Black Neck Adventures about four years ago. And I had it since I started Facebook. I mean, I, I started my Facebook in 2009. And then when the Black Neck Adventures became, I put it on there, and they took my account away and said I couldn't have it back, I guess because of the name. I don't know. So I had to start a new account and leave that off and just use my name. So Facebook kind of got me to where I can't use that as my title name. I guess they thought I was going to be offending myself because I'm like, I guess. I don't know. So, but yeah, Mike Goodwine on Facebook and Instagram, Black Neck Adventures. I got a YouTube channel, but it's, I post like one video a year. So, you could go watch reruns, but I ain't a YouTuber. So. <laughs> Nothing wrong I'm, with YouTube. I, I just ain't a YouTuber. I wish I was. I just ain't got ain't got the time. I, I understand. Yeah, I remember at one point. I think it was your Instagram. Um, yeah, I put it was Instagram when it said, you know, Black Neck Adventures rated Tampa's number one black fishing guide, and then it was like dot dot dot. I'm the only black fishing guide in Tampa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, man. I I just like to have fun. Um, even with this tournament, no, I didn't win the tournament, but the guy who won it, the guy who got third, and the guy who got fifth afterwards came up to me and said they can't wait to come to Tampa and fish with me. That's awesome. I look like a lot of fun. Yeah. So I was like, yes. And to me, I won. <laughs> it, with, in myself, like, uh, <laughs> Just trying to make fishing fun, man. Again, yeah. uh, just you know, that's that's my thing. When a lot of people get on the water, they all serious, and and they just take it way too much serious. Cause it ain't it ain't fun. When you get on my boat, we're gonna have fun. We're gonna crack up. We're gonna laugh, and we're gonna catch fish. If we ain't catching fish. You're going to be laughing and having so much fun, you ain't even going to know you ain't catching fish. That's, that's the truth. <laughs> we've, we've, we've sent a lot of people over to fish with uh, Captain Mike, and uh, and everything he said is, is true. So definitely, if you're ever in the Tampa area, uh, book them. You got to do it in advance, though. It's, uh, I know it's tough to get on your calendar sometimes, but uh, definitely definitely book Captain Mike. It is a blast, and the dude catches a lot of fish. Yeah, and thanks, Salt Strong, for – everything man uh thank you for everything y'all y'all have helped me with and uh i remember when y'all first came on the scene uh a lot of people was doubting y'all and i was even one of the ones i'm like i don't i don't get it and then i got it and i'm like oh yeah i get it now <laughs> and the, that's kind of, you know what? Now, now that I said, I'll wrap me this real quick. Uh, like when I stepped on the scene, a lot, the, some of the people in the industry that had been there before me didn't like me because I was helping people. Yep. And I was friendly and I wasn't the grumpy old captain and I was anybody I saw, I don't care if they was on the shoreline or Okay, how expensive they both was. I was trying to help them catch fish. And that's kind of the way I kind of look at y'all, too. Y'all stepped on the scene, and y'all have always been about helping anglers become better anglers. Well, some anglers 
don't like that because yep. they <laughs> they don't want other people to be as good as them. Yep. But yep. that's where we out there for, man. We teach and help people. And the same enjoyment we, we like catching fish, we want to see other people have that same enjoyment instead of trying Absolutely. to keep it all yeah. to ourselves. Absolutely. No, and you, you crush it on that. And we've, uh, that's why we love you from uh, from the get go, and we've done a few things. I mean, we did that little mini course inside the Insider Club. Mm-hmm. That that's one of our most popular ones of all time, man. That was a and you bit yeah. the bit the head off the the bait. And it, <laughs> that that thing has so many comments on it. Oh my gosh! Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And then next year, coming up next year, we we got some stuff coming for everybody that's on the Insiders. Yep, you got to be part of the Insiders to see it. You ain't it. gonna get it. So. Tell a friend and tell a friend. I love it. And that's all at saltstrong.com. Come uh, come join us. All right, my friend. Well, I appreciate you big time. I'll let you get back to the hunting camp there and uh, out of the Walmart parking lot. Uh, although you probably had some good people watching opportunities while you're sitting there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've been sitting, people, uh, sitting here watching people. And they probably watching me sitting out here in the middle of the parking lot. <laughs> like talking being animated on the phone <laughs> and uh she's looking at me okay. she's working <laughs> <laughs> so the whole time she's been sitting there chilling Dude, too. that's a hoot <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, that's a hoot. well you guys have, right, have a blast man we appreciate you so much okay we appreciate y'all too and have a blessed day thank yes, you yes sir all right guys all right